Hi everybody, I hope that this is going to um, help straighten things out in terms of nursing management of chest tubes and knowing complications and um, feel a little bit more comfortable with them. So this is kind of rudimentary, but it will be things that possibly you'll be asked on NCLEX down the road. So first thing you need to know is that a chest tube system has three chambers. Our first chamber here is called the drainage collection chamber. This is where um, the actual chest tube coming from the patient is going to empty into, okay? Do, do, do. So this is where the fluid, air, whatnot is being drained into, okay? That is the first chamber. Our second chamber is our water seal chamber. This is where you're going to look for titling. Titling is good. Bubbles in the water seal chamber is bad. Bubbles in the water seal chamber is bad, okay? Number three, our third chamber is going to be our suction control. This can be wet or dry. Bubbling in the suction control when it is wet is good. It is absolutely okay. Bubbles here are good in the suction control chamber is good. Okay, so uh, titling, like I said, um, in our second chamber is going to be our water seal chamber. You're going to see titling, and that's absolutely fine. Um, titling will happen when um, a person breathes, so during respiration. So what you're going to see here going up and down is going to be titling. Okay, titling is good and that's going to happen when a person breathes. Um, when they breathe in, fluid's going to go up um, or if there's a spontaneous respiration will rise and that's basically because it's increasing negative pressure within the lung. So you'll see the rise and fall there. That is called titling in the water seal chamber. That's absolutely fine. Now, however, if you start to see um, bubbling in this area, let's see, I don't like that. Um, let's go back to drawing. Say you see bubbling here. These are like terrible bubbles, but a lot of bubbles here, kind of like a jacuzzi. Um, in the water seal chamber, that's bad because that is indicating that there is an air seal leak um, somewhere along the tubing. Um, so the leak could possibly be here where it's connected to the patient, somewhere along the tubing, and um, there is a part where it is connected here to the valve, so you might want to check here or somewhere along the ways, and even if you get to this area, it might actually be in the unit itself. Now, typically you're not to clamp uh, a tubing. Uh, clamping is bad because that can cause a tension pneumothorax, um, but if you need to figure out where there is the leak, you can clamp for a few seconds. So first you wanna make sure that your dressing is secure. If that's fine, you kinda of move along the way where the connection is here, make sure the tape is secure. If you get to the point here, like I said, and near the chamber itself, um, it's still bubbling, it might be with the unit itself and the unit needs to be swapped out. Here in the water seal chamber, uh, there is water here. You'll typically want to check that every two hours. If you need to add more water, you will want to use sterile water, all right? Sterile water, R-I-L-E, okay, so you can add sterile water there. Um, chest tubes, um, when they are put in, you typically want to encourage your patient to do uh, coughing and deep breathing every two hours. Again, check the water seal every two hours, add fluid when needed. You want to report um, excessive drainage of more than 70 um, milliliters per hour. So as you're checking on your patient, as there is drainage, um, let's say this is some drainage here, you come along, you will actually make a mark and you'll, you'll put a time and date. So to kind of keep track um, as time goes by, say there's more fluid, 
you come by again, you put a line. Now know if a person moves or they cough um, that you might see drainage come very quickly just because they're forcefully expelling it. Um, but if the drainage looks cloudy or bright red, you need to report that immediately. Monitor the insertion area here for redness, tenderness, or crepitus, which is that um, subcutaneous emphysema that I talked about, um, where basically air has escaped into the tissue here. Um, and again, that sounds kind of like a snap, crackle, pop. In your patient room at all times, you should keep um, two hemostats. You want to keep occlusion gauze, and you also want to keep um, sterile water. Okay? You want to have that at all times. Um, do not, uh, in terms of chest tube management, do not strip or milk the tubing. This can create a high pressure um, within the lungs and cause damage to lung tissue. Um, so don't try to milk it to kind of push basically anything within the tubing. Uh, you do not want any dependent loops like around um, or hanging on the actual unit itself because um, you want to allow gravity to do its job. Now again, um, complications, air leaks, where are you going to see an air leak? Is it going to be in chamber one, chamber two, or chamber three? I hope you said chamber two, which is the water seal chamber. If you see bubbling here, that means there's an air leak, okay? Tiling, fluid going up and down is okay. And sometimes you may they will see, you might see like a gentle bubbling here, but that's part of the titling. Like I said, like if it looks like a jacuzzi in here, that's bad, there's an air leak. Um, bubbles in the suction chamber, absolutely okay, especially if you're doing wet suction. Titling, good. Now, if titling stops, um, that could possibly mean uh, that the lung um, has re-expand re-expanded or there might be an obstruction within the system. Um, so it could be good or bad, but that's the first thing you should think of if this titling stops, that there's either that the lung has actually re-expanded or there's an obstruction. Now, if you are involved doing a chest tube removal um, or if the chest tube falls out, if the chest tube falls out, um, first thing you want to do is have a patient uh, take a deep breath out as much as possible. <clears throat> Cough, try to move as much air from that pleural space um, and then to dress that area with a dry sterile gauze and obviously contact the MD. If the chest tube drainage system itself is compromised, um, you want to immerse the chest tube here into sterile water to help restore the water seal until you can replace the actual drainage system. Um, if you're helping to have um, a chest tube removed, you kind of want to have the patient do the same thing. Uh, take a deep breath, exhale, bear down, which is the Valsalva maneuver. Um, and hold that breath because that will help increase the intrathoracic pressure and reduce the risk of any air embolize um, during the removal. Now once a chest tube is removed, the type of dressing you will put is an airtight sterile petroleum jelly gauze dressing um, and use some heavy duty uh, tape across it to basically help maintain that seal. So that basically is nursing management of chest tubes in a nutshell, less than 10 minutes. Again, things you need to be concerned about um, is the color of fluid in your collection chamber. Uh, titling is good in the water seal chamber, but a lot of continuous jacuzzi like bubbling and that is bad because that means an air leak. Bubbling in the suction control is good. Uh, make sure you have equipment um, in the room just in case if a uh, patient gets kind of um, confused and pulls out their tube and put a just sterile gauze dressing over that. Um, 
So hopefully that will help you and uh, take some of the mystery out of uh, chest tube management.